this is the welcome screen window that I have been talking about. Okay, so thank you everybody. I can see that you can see that now. Um, so the left here is where I clicked drawing and painting. And this is where you see sample artwork from painter artists. You can browse to their websites and also you see the suggested brush categories, just to recap. And then you also have document templates. And you can easily work your way around this welcome screen. So I'm gonna click to go back. Um, down in the left-hand corner, those are the recent documents. You can open up images from here. Over on the right, you've got your quick start guide. And if I click that, it's actually gonna bring me to the PDF, so I'm not gonna do that right now. You can go to painterartist.com and also join our Facebook community. We have close to 50,000 artists there that are um, collaborating with each other and posting artwork on a regular basis, so it's a lot of fun. Now, if I want to begin some photo art, I'm gonna click right here to start new. And the wonderful thing about Painter Essentials 5 is that it's super easy to create something that looks incredible. So, and in, in really, you could even do this in two steps. You could create a beautiful work of art. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Create Photo Art. And I, I happen to already have this image open here, but I just wanna show you the process um, from accessing your images from within the welcome screen. So we'll go ahead and open up the, the infamous Ellen selfie. And we're gonna just begin to do a little painting of this. Now I had mentioned how easy it is. Once you've got your image, Essentials has done a lot of the work for you. So by default, the panel that shows up when you first launch Painter Essentials is your photo painting panel. And you see that right here. So if we were to have accessed from, you know, file open menu to get our image, um, you could come over here and it, we could choose our photo, which we already have because we accessed that from the welcome screen. And now I'm going to choose an auto painting style. So I'm going to go ahead and choose detailed painting and we'll let it, it do its thing here. So what's happening right now, it painted with a square hard pastel. And if you look in the top left hand corner, that is my brush selector. And that is showing me what brushes this auto painting is using in order to accomplish the painting for us. And then it went and it did a little soft cloner work. Now I'm gonna go ahead and um, let's just close out of this because um, if you notice, and I've heard some of you mentioning this in social media land out there, some of these preset auto painting settings apply a canvas transition for you. So this is blending out the edges of the canvas. You may not want that. So let me show you a little tip here. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of the image. And before I start to paint the image this time, I'm gonna go to effects and I'm gonna to go to focus and I'm gonna sharpen this just a little bit, just to bring out the edges. So if we don't want that blending on the edge of the canvas, what I recommend prior to your beginning your painting, and I didn't notice that Brad Pitt has a little um, glitch on his face here, but not to worry, because we're gonna have some fun with this at the end and I will just paint that right out. Okay, so we've got it sharpened. And now if I want to add the edges to the canvas, I'm going to come up to canvas, canvas size, and I'm going to add 100 pixels all the way around. So it's going to add 100 pixels, um, top, bottom, right, left. And now you can see if we now say I want to use this open image, and I am going to go ahead and save this image. So um, we'll save it because when we want to come back later and begin painting, it's going to automatically link the photo to our RIF file for us. So you never have to go looking for a photo if you get interrupted with your painting process. We'll just pop this out on the desktop. I'll save it as an uncompressed painter RIF. So anytime you want to make sure that you're saving your source image file, save as a RIF. When you're ready to post online, you can select a different format like JPEG, PNG, whatever your choice may be. So we'll save this out there. And we're gonna do that detailed painting and then we'll save um, what it creates for us to come back and have a little fun with a little bit later. So once this is done, I'll go ahead and make sure that um, everything's going okay. I'll check and see if you have any questions. So now you can see here, it's I don't get that blending on the edges because I added the extra canvas around it. And this works perfect for our image. So once it's done with its job right here, and what I love about this is not only did it paint with a pastel, it used a soft cloner, so we didn't have to go in and do any of this hand touching up, 
It also applied a smart blur to the image, which just kind of softens up those pixels for us. So let's go ahead and save this out on the desktop there and we'll just keep it the same name and we'll come back to that a little bit later. So I see some hands raised and let me just check out the questions here. Um, so John is asking, is there no boxed version of Painter Essentials 5? There is a, it's, it comes in a DVD case, so you'll get a DVD. No, we don't have an official box version, but you can buy the physical copy with the CD if you prefer to do that over downloading the ESD version. All right, looks like we're good to go. Um, I don't see any other questions right now. So let's go ahead and try out another selfie image. So we'll close out of this one. And I'm not painting pictures of myself this entire time because I thought that would get pretty boring. So I'm gonna go out and something that many of you may wanna do is to paint a photo of yourself with your boyfriend, your significant other, even if it's just a friend. So we've got our image here and I'm going to kick things off by just kind of pointing out our interface elements here. So we just worked with the photo painting. We didn't have to actually go and grab any brushes yet. So in the top left-hand corner, this is where you find your brush selector. And we have everything alphabetized for you. In Painter Essentials 5, we've actually combined some of the brush categories. If you've ever used 2015, you'll see some of those categories are combined together here in Essentials. Reason being, we wanted to simplify things. So we went through and we selected the brushes that we felt were the best for a beginner to get started in digital art. All right, so that's how you select your brushes. On the left is the category. On the right are the variants. And as I scroll over the variants, you see down in the bottom there, it's a um, brush stroke preview. So the nice thing about this is that you can kind of see what that stroke's gonna look like before having to go out to the canvas and do a test stroke. So that is your brush selector. You also have up on the top here, your recent brushes. So you can quickly access a brush that you may have used um, within your painting session. Now to the right of the brush selector is our property bar, which is right here. And this gives me the quick common commands that I may use, you know, if I want to adjust the size of my brush, opacity, grain, easy access right here. Now down the left hand side, this is my toolbar. And we'll use quite a few of these tools here today. So I'll be pointing those out as I go along. But one thing to note is anytime you see a, an arrow in the lower right hand corner, you just click and that actually is a flyout menu that shows you other tools that are similar to the original tool that you see there on the palette. And then you've got your color wheel. So you can move this around. You can actually size it up or down. So if I just drag and pull, um, dragging right or left, that will allow me to resize it. And you can place this anywhere you like within Painter. Now, if I wanna zoom in on my photo right here, I can open up under the window menu. So you've got all your drop down menus up on the top. From the window menu, I am going to open up the navigator. And this is really cool. We didn't have this in uh, the previous version of Painter Essentials. What this allows me to do is to easily zoom in. I can you know, pan around. I could rotate my canvas if I want to. So I just click and drag to rotate if you need to get that exact angle, if you're trying to sketch something. So all these come in handy. We'll just keep that open and I'll pop that down on the bottom here for right now so you can see what I'm doing. So let's go back to the toolbar. And I actually, we're gonna make a holiday card out of this and I don't want the European, I'm assuming it's a European background there. So I'm gonna use my freehand selection tool and I'm not gonna be too careful. I'm gonna come right here and I'm gonna make a selection of this couple, okay? And I'm going out of the lines, that's not a big deal. This whole image is gonna be covered with paint when we're done. So that's the nice thing about when you're painting, you don't have to, or making your selection, you don't have to be too exact because I could actually fill in the blanks or paint in what I need later. So that wasn't the greatest selection, no worries. I'm gonna go ahead and say, select, take that selection and float it for me. Now what we don't have open is our layers palette. So this is another handy tool that you can grab as you need it. I'm gonna come up to the Windows menu and go to Layers. So now we have the couple floating on their own layer, which is exactly what I want. 
So we're going to open up the background that we want for the holiday card. And this is going to be a nice beach scene with a Santa hat sitting there. And I'll go ahead and zoom in so that you can see this. And we can just grab that selection that we just created. Now you could either do a file place, which will allow you to import that selection if I had saved the file, or because I still have the document open here, I'm just going to do a Command or Control A. I'm working on a Mac. And I'm just selecting the content on that layer. I'm going to copy it. And we're going to come back over here and we're going to paste. Okay. So not a perfect selection, but not to worry because we've got tools over here that can help us. If I just wanted to maybe erase a little bit of that or later on we can paint in what we need. Maybe get rid of this little fringe on his hair here. Okay, so you can easily combine multiple images using Painter. We also have transform tools and um, if we have time, I'll show you a little bit of that later. So we've got this pretty much where I want it to be. And so I'm going to take, and I'm actually going to drop on this layer one here from the layers menu. I'm going to drop the couple down to the canvas because we want to do a little painting. So drop everything. So I did a little bit of that editing work here in Painter, and now I want to use this open image to paint from. So I'm going to come to the photo painting palette, use my open image. And for now, I'm not going to worry about saving this because we're just going to finish off the painting job right here. And let's select a painting style. So the first one you saw me use was the detailed painting, which does a lot of the work for you. So this time around, um, I think that I'm going to select the illustration style. I happen to like this one a lot too. So if you take a look at the brush selector in the left-hand corner, once I click Start, it's going to begin to do the painting for me. This is actually using an acrylic brush. And that's why we can see those little bristly edges on um, our brush strokes that it's placing out there. Now, I, I like to point out what brush it's using because if you do want to go back in and do any hand touching up, you'll find in the photo painting brushes category, the opaque acrylic is what the auto painting brush was. So if you want to match that same style, just grab that same brush and do your painting. So by default, it's obviously cloning the color from the source image. Depending upon the size of your file, um, it might take a little bit longer. If you have a really large photo at a high DPI, um, it'll take longer for Painter Essentials to paint it out for you. This particular image, um, it's not too big of a file. I think it's probably about eight inches across and it's 150 DPI, which I find works really well for auto painting. You don't have to have a real super high um, resolution file to work with. Okay, so it's just about done. And I'll just let it finish things up here and keep talking you through all of this. So once it's done, I'm probably gonna go grab that opaque acrylic brush and start to do a little painting myself. Now the third step that you see in the photo painting panel, paint by hand, we can do some refining of the painting. Okay, so it's done. My brush is available for me here. So let's do that. We're in the third step, paint by hand. And clone color from source image is checked. And by default, it has selected the soft cloner brush for me. So this brush size is a little bit too big for my taste. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the size down. And you could choose. So right now I'm cloning right on the canvas. Um, if I undo, I can actually insert a layer and we could clone into that layer. So if you wanted to use the layer opacity and reduce back, if you maybe cloned in a little bit too much, you can easily do that if you're painting into a layer. So let's just bring in parts of their faces here. And I'm going to go back to the photo painting brushes. And it was the opaque acrylic that it was using to do that auto painting for me. Okay, so I could size my brush up and a really small brush is going to bring in a lot of detail. And the larger that you size the brush up, the more it's going to be doing a blending of pixels that are on the canvas and actually kind of blurring more of the details from your image. Okay, so I'm going to get a small size brush and I'm going to come over to her hair here and just do a little bit of touching up. Now, I don't have to stick 
with the brush that it used to auto paint with. I'm gonna take a look at some of the other options we have here. So the Impressionist cloner I just selected. Now I wanna make sure, I'm gonna click down to the canvas and that brush is a little bit too big so I'm gonna size it down and you can mix and match a variety of different types of media and styles all on one canvas. And this is what's so wonderful about Painter that you can't find in the traditional world, or many times it's pretty difficult <laughs> to mix and match to different types of media all on one canvas. So I'm gonna go ahead, because I don't like the way that that's looking there, I'm just gonna drop everything onto the canvas so that we can blend those pixels together. So we can mix and match a little impressionist style here. If I just wanted to do um, a blending of pixels, I could actually just use a blender. So if I use something like a coarse smear blender, you see here, this is pretty cool because it gives me some kind of fringy edges on my brush and we can begin to kind of blend out some of her skin. Okay, maybe get rid of some of the fringe up here. So this works really nice for things like the sky, so we can add a little bit more texture into that sky. So you guys get the idea. You know, you can use a variety of different brushes to create your mixed media piece. And to finish everything off, if we did really wanna make this a holiday card, um, I could actually come and grab a brush and we could write in our holiday message. So I'm gonna go to my, maybe just a plain old, old scratch board tool and we're gonna grab the color wheel. Now the way that you mix up color, and there's a variety of ways for you to do this. We've got the color wheel, the outside is the hue. So you can see, you know, now I've got red, blue, swing around the outside. The inside is a saturation or value of the color that you select. So if I want red, I want a really bright red, I can bring it all the way to full saturation. Now, just to quickly point out, we also have over here in the photo painting palette, a color mixer. So you could come in here and you could begin to mix and blend your own colors. And then we also have, so if we wanted to sample some colors and grab our little mixer brush here, you know, I can mix up my own red. You also have color sets to work with. So there's all kinds of possibilities in Painter Essentials. But for right now, I just want my red. We're gonna shrink this down, pop that down here. And I do not have the best handwriting, guys. So um, let's make sure that I am not painting. Now this happens to me every once in a while. So did you see, I selected red, I go to stroke the canvas and it is still set to clone color from source image. So if you want to paint with your own color, you just need to make sure that you deselect. I can't um, write and talk at the same time, obviously. And there we have our little holiday card. So to finish things off, I always like to use under the effects menu, surface control, because this adds a really um, natural media type of effect. Um, you can do things like apply lighting, but surface texture is pretty neat. So this allows me, and I have not pointed out the paper textures to you yet, so in the toolbar, all the way down on the bottom, you have all these cool paper textures that you can choose from, and it also gives you access from right here within the panel. So you immediately see, as you select the different textures, how that appears on your canvas, and you can either bump up the amount of texture or reduce it down. Really depends on, you know, if you're posting it online, add all the texture that you want. If you're gonna print on a canvas, I probably wouldn't recommend adding a texture because then it'll be texture on texture. Okay, so there is our first little holiday greeting or message that you could post right up on Facebook or any other social property. Okay, so I'm just taking a look. So John, I see that you're asking me, can I install on two, comp two computers? Yes, you can. You can install on a desktop, a laptop, and even a work computer. So technically three. And let's see, Violet, what is that blue spot? between the couple. Oh, I think that's just the, the water showing through in the background there. You could, you could paint that out too. So 
let's go ahead and move on to our next example. So we'll close out of the couple here, just make sure we're back in essentials. And the next thing that I'd like to show you, so we did a little mixed media kind of work. Um, next, let's try to do a sketch and a watercolor. So I'm going to open up another image to work with. And let's see here. Um, so we've got this cute little photo. I happen to have a bulldog. I take a lot of photos with my dog. So I think this is something pretty common that people do, um, whether it's a selfie. It's, it's hard for me to get a selfie with my dog. He's very stubborn. And I guess that's why they call them bulldogs. Um, so we've got this beautiful dog and this woman. And I want to begin by creating a sketch. So before I even do any digital watercolor painting, I'm going to create my sketch first. So once again, coming back to the layers, I'm going to insert a layer. And one of my favorite sketching tools happens to be the scratch board tool. Now, there are some other really wonderful tools, you know, whether you want to grab a pencil, a thick and thin marker. It really depends on your taste. Um, you know, something like a cover pencil will give you some nice texture in your stroke. So I'm going to use the scratch board tool. And before I begin to create my sketch, there is a handy helper for all of you. And I happen to be using, I don't think I've told you yet, that I have my Wacom Intuos Pro tablet that I'm using here. And it by default allows beautiful pressure sensitivity for painter essentials. But there is something else that I can do to actually beef up the pressure for my particular touch. So it gives pressure sensitive memory based on how I'm interacting with my tablet. So if you go to your preferences and brush tracking, you want to come in here and you can use this every time you launch Painter Essentials or when you first launch it. There is our default global pressure sensitivity settings. If you want it to be customized to your particular touch, now see how it's adjusting the pressure over here. So if I just do a very light stroke or if I do a light to hard stroke, it's adjusting the pressure scale based on my touch. Now I recommend you do this by default. Come in, give it a sample. That'll set the global settings, but even as you're switching between different brushes. So if you're using a pencil versus an oil paint, you may have a very different touch on the tablet and you can apply the pressure sensitivity settings to a current brush variant. So right now it's going to apply to the scratch board tool and I'll go ahead and say, okay. All right. So to kick this off here, um, I'm actually going to take the image off the canvas and I just um, copied and pasted it to float it above the canvas. And I'm going to get rid of, and the reason I'm doing this, I just want to set a little transparency on the image. So I want to be able to see the image, but I don't want it to interfere with my sketching process. So I've got the scratch board tool. I'm going to grab the color wheel and I'm just going to set it to black. Now guys, I'm not going to promise that um, my sketch, oh, okay, I'm going to start over. Um, I'm not going to promise that it's going to look, you know, tremendous because I'm trying to do this very quickly just to give you an idea of the kinds of capabilities that are in the application. I'd probably spend more than just a couple of seconds sketching something out. Okay, so for demonstration purposes only, um, create a little sketch, and then we're going to actually do the watercolor painting underneath this. All right, so you can toggle, and one thing I haven't shown, um, we're kind of cheating a little bit here, and I'm using the image as a source. I could have also cloned this image and just created my sketch over and I'll, I'll show you how that works, um, using the clone source as my reference point. So a lot of people will use the cloning if they want to trace an image, kind of like I'm doing here. This truly is pretty much tracing. Okay, so let's get her arm in here. And I think I've had way too much coffee this morning because I don't really have a super steady hand. Now remember I showed you that navigator and this could come in handy, you know, if you can't quite get the exact angle that you're going for with the sketch with the 
your image sitting um, perfectly horizontal on the canvas, you can use the navigator in order to do a little rotation of your canvas. Okay, come over here, use a little bit of a lighter touch. And I may not complete this whole sketch. You guys kind of get the idea of where I'm going here. And I think I actually saved a sketch that is probably a lot better than what I'm creating right here. So to set it back, if I want to reset the rotation, I just double click. All right, so let's zoom in. And you can grab right here and zoom in or out. And I'm just going to click the B key to get back to my brush tool. And I'm going to size down the scratch board tool just a little bit. And we'll get our eyebrows in here and paint the eyes. Okay, so there's another example that I created for all of you if you um, have seen it on our Essentials feature tab, and that is a watercolor of a dog. So this is really the same technique that I used there. Um, I just sped it up tremendously so that you wouldn't have to sit through the entire process. Let's get the edge of her nose and we got to get some of this cute little dog's face sketched in here. Okay, and what I want you to keep in mind is have fun. Don't worry too much. If you mess something up, guess what? There's an undo key. There's an eraser. So just don't worry about everything looking perfect because I actually find even when I don't think it looks perfect, it ends up coming out as a beautiful painting in the end. I don't know if I'm going to promise that for this one right here. Okay, so let's get his eye. Come over here. All right. Oh, I need the top of his head. And then we're done. And the side of her face. <laughs> All right. Okay. So now let's zoom out, see what we got going on here. I'm not going to worry about the background right now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this. Um, instead of just running the auto painting and we forgot to, to put his body in here, let's go ahead and I'm going to save my sketch and I'm going to place the sketch over my auto paint. Okay, so I'll show you how the place feature works. So let's just save our the dog sketch and we'll save it out on the desktop here. And I'll go ahead and do a PNG so we can have our transparent background. All right, so now let's close out of this and we're gonna go back and grab that original image. Okay, so we've got this. Now you can do your own hand painting, but I actually find that with the watercolor, um, the auto painting setting works quite well. I don't prefer the auto painting setting with the sketch included, which is why I just created my own sketch. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the um, detailed watercolor. And we're just gonna make sure that in our layers palette, I'm gonna go ahead and place the sketch that I've created. And I'll show you how you can use your um, tool to move your sketch around. We can actually adjust the transparency on the sketch. So let's let it do its thing. Now, if you wanted to paint by hand, and I can show you a sample of the background that I painted by hand, um, that's obviously gonna give it a little more of a personal touch. And the watercolor that I recommend for that, that I find works really well, is the digital watercolor and the coarse water brush because you have a lot of control over how the watercolor seeps into the paper texture. So I'll point that out once our auto painting is done here. So hopefully you're starting to understand it's pretty easy. You know, you can combine the auto painting along with some of your own hand painted touches. And in a matter of minutes, you can create artwork that looks like you spend a lot of time on it. So hopefully some of these little tips are helping out for you here. Um, I don't want to click on the questions panel right now because it'll stop the auto painting. So once this is done, we'll place the sketch and then we'll move on. Next, I'd like to show you how you can take any image and we can actually turn a portrait into a pastel or an oil painting. And I'm going to show you some tips for prepping the file in order to make easy work of your own hand painted oils, chalks, pastels, 
and even some of the non-natural types of media like the splattery clone spray. All right, so I'm impatient. So I'm gonna stop just for time's sake here in the webinar. I'm gonna, if you click on the canvas window, that actually stops the auto painting from doing its thing. So I'm gonna tap and then we're gonna come up here and we're just gonna make sure. So I've got my layers palette and I'm gonna go file place. And we saved out on the, um, no, it's not wanting me to, it's not letting me browse out there. So I'm gonna say file open. Mm, okay, I think it's still thinking about that auto paint. So let me give it a second here. I'm gonna pull up the, the questions. Um, yes, Debbie, this is being recorded. So this will be available after the session here today. Okay, so now it's done auto painting. And we saved it out on the desktop and I called it, here we go, sketch. All right. Okay, now not to worry people um, because we've got a white background there. But this is why in the layers palette, you have your composite methods. So I could switch this to something like gel. We can make sure we have it perfectly positioned. I could even tone back that sketch a little bit. And now we have our own hand hewn sketch. And remember I added his back in there after the fact. So if we wanted to fix that, cause I kind of messed that up, we'll go ahead and commit that layer. And I could add back in a little bit of the the scratch board. Now, once again, remember, click off clone color if you want to paint with your own color. And then we could sign this. All right, so then you could give that to your friend for the holidays. All right, so that's sketching and digital watercolor. So now let's try out taking a portrait and I'm gonna grab, let's see here, right in here, and I want this nice close-up picture. So let's say this was a selfie that you took of yourself. And I actually may show you a selfie of myself at the very end. <laughs> so I've got this close-up image and I want to create a pastel drawing out of this. So in order to kick things off, I'm gonna come up to the effects menu and I'm gonna do some adjustment of the colors. Okay, so let's just reset this, make sure that it's at the default so you can see every step of the way. Now I'm gonna take, um, let's see here, I actually want to make sure that I'm taking the saturation all the way down. I want just a black and white. Now what I'm trying to accomplish here is a a large amount of contrast between the darks and the lights. And the reason that we wanna do this is so that your brush that you're selecting, it actually is able to see that contrast and you're able to paint in the details based on the contrast in the photo, okay? So saturation all the way down, value all the way up, okay? Now that's a little bit faded right now, but I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna say, let's go back into the tonal control and let's play with the brightness and contrast. Okay, so this is where we start off, zero, zero. We definitely want to lower the brightness. Let's see how that looks. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And then I wanna increase the contrast just a tad. So it gives me the real-time preview. And this is not something that you had in Painter Essentials. Four, you didn't have any, you know, as you're making your adjustments using the effects, it wasn't giving you a real-time preview. You had a tiny little thumbnail window to work with, which wasn't um, really productive. So this is very handy, this real-time preview. So now I'm gonna say, okay. And I'm actually also gonna take advantage of the woodcut. So the woodcut, if you've seen any of the feature videos, you can do some really neat um, woodcut painting kind of effects right here. I'm just gonna be working with, I just want to get a really nice black edge. So let's make sure we've got this reset here. So when you first get into the woodcut settings so that you understand how to make this edge come out. And of course it's thinking cause we're in a go-to meeting. So let's just let it do its thinking to set it back to the, begin, the beginning. Um, so we already adjusted the image so that it was just black and white. We don't wanna output color. 
I only want to output black. And we don't want all of this, you know, kind of gritty stuff showing up in her skin. And we just want to extrude the edges and make those stand out. So I'm going to take the black edge and I'm going to increase it all the way up to 100 and see what happens here. Okay, so that's getting better. Now, I still don't want, um, you know, this erosion kind of stuff that we see here. So I'm going to go down and maybe the heaviness, if I make some adjustments to that, I'm going to reduce that just a little bit. We'll let it process and, oh, okay. So that's, that's actually getting better. Um, I'm going to bring it up just a tad, one or two percent. Okay, so I think this is good. So we have a very good base to begin our painting from. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. All right, so now what we want to do, we're going to use photo painting yet again. So I'm going to use the open image, and we won't save it. And now we're not going to use any of the auto paint. We're going to do some hand painting here. Now, one thing that I should show you, so in the third step, you can go right from choosing a photo, you can skip auto paint and go to paint by hand. I wanna turn the tracing paper on, okay? So this is another way that we could have done the sketch of the girl by cloning and then just using the clone source as our reference point. So there's always more than one way to get things done in software, as you all know. So now I've got the tracing paper, I can adjust the amount of opacity level on this okay so let's I just want to faintly see her so that I know where to place my brush strokes now by default when you say you want to do a photo painting it brings you into the photo painting brushes and I'm going to begin with a square hard pastel so all the way down on the bottom here yeah I think I'll go with hard instead of grainy probably either one could work and now and you know what? I'm actually going to come in here and use the brush tracking, give it a little bit of a harder stroke. All right, so what this is allowing me to do, and we'll increase the brush size, is to use the photo as our reference point. Let me adjust that one more time because I actually want it to be picking up a little more of the texture, so with a lighter touch. Okay, so as I'm beginning to just sketch along the edges here, it's picking up the texture. And you know what, I'm gonna change the, let's get a little bit more of a hard paper texture. All right, so turn the tracing paper off. So you can see how I started with that very faint kind of fluttery paper texture. Not the best selection if I'm trying to create a um, pastel painting. So now I have a texture. I can't remember exactly which one I selected. We can go back and look at that, but it's a very ribbed paper texture. And my brush is attracted to the darks that we created by doing these small adjustments to the photo prior to coming into our photo painting. So you can see here, you can get a very natural, it looks like something that you have taken a lot of time to create your own custom hand sketch. Now, once again, remember, so the brush is a little bit big, it's good for the eyeball, but when I'm trying to get some of the details and the eyelashes, you may wanna shrink down the size of your brush. The smaller the brush, the more detail it's going to bring into your painting, drawing, sketch, no matter which, type of media and brush that you're choosing to use. So let's just bump this up to make quicker work of filling this in. Okay, and I'm zoomed in really tight here so that you guys can see what's happening, but toggling the tracing paper, you can either click it from right here in the panel or you can do Command or Control T to toggle the tracing paper on and off. Okay, so this is another one of my very favorite ways to cheat and create something that looks very much like a traditional painting. All right, so let's get some of this to find her neck here. 
The other thing that I like about this effect is that, you know, we've we reduced so much of the detail in the image that um, we're really just focusing the attention on her face and kind of her, um, her, the outline of her body rather than needing to bring in all of the finer details. All right, so I think we'll go ahead and take a look at how that looks. Okay, so a few more minutes of working with this, we could have a, a pretty nice looking sketch. Now, if I press down hard, that's gonna bring in a darker color. So once you've got the initial sketch laid down, you probably wanna go in and do a little bit of work, you know, fine tuning things. And because we're doing a webinar, I just don't have time to spend even five extra more minutes because I have so many things that I wanna show you guys here today. Okay, so there is a sketch. Now I'm just going to take a quick check of the Q&A panel. Okay, everything looks good. I don't see any questions. And I think um, Jamie from the painter team actually joined us. So maybe he's helping to field some of this stuff. So I'm going to select everything on the canvas and clear it off. And now let's come up and let's grab something that's not so traditional. So um, splattery clone spray. Turn on the tracing paper. And now, this works really well because it's super attracted to the dark areas. Okay, so if I toggle the tracing paper off, you can see what's happening here. So you can get, you know, a not so traditional look. It kind of looks like a little stippled effect that we have here. So you can try this with all of these photo painting brushes. And it's actually a lot of fun just to sit and experiment. It's a great way to discover which brushes you might like to actually do um, some more painting with. All right, so let's get the top of her head. Okay, so there's another one. Let's say we go for something like an oil. I'm gonna go up at the top here and we'll do a camel oil cloner. And let's turn the tracing paper back on. Okay, so this very beautiful oily type of brush. Okay, and get her eyebrows here and let me just zoom in so that you can see now with this brush, you see those actual bristly hairs coming out. Now, if you wanted this to be color, you could do that also. I just chose to do black and white here today, but depending upon the adjustments that you make to your photo, um, you know, you could paint with a colored outline, you could actually paint the entire image in color because the woodcut also supports using color. Okay, so check this out. All right, get some of her hairline in there. All right, so I think you guys probably got the idea and we'll have this, you know, the recording is saved so you can go back and do the um, photo prep by following the steps that I did in the very beginning. All right, and use any brush within this entire category, even if I wanted to begin to do something like an impressionist painting. Okay, it's still going to look at those areas of contrast and it's going to pull the details from that. Okay, so that's uh, how you could create a very nice portrait of yourself or of a loved one. All right, so let's close out of this and let's have some fun with particle brushes. So we're gonna open up kind of crazy image and we've got our little granny here and I'm still going to use the photo painting okay but we're gonna once again do a more hand painted type of approach so we've got granny I'm gonna use the open image so we've done our cloning and I'll go ahead and show tracing paper so within the photo painting brushes um, you also have some particle brushes to work with. In addition to the particles that you'll see over here in their own category. So I'm gonna grab, um, I'm gonna actually use both of these, okay? Now check this out. So if I use the particle flow bristle, what's really neat about this brush is that it's attracted to the areas in the image where there's um, a lot of saturation. And hopefully, I'm not exactly sure if you can see this via the go-to meeting. Sometimes the go-to meeting kind of plays with what you're able to see. But 
coming off the tip of my brush are these crazy particles that are springing all over the place. And depending upon the direction that I'm pointing my stylus and the tablet, that's the direction that the particles are flowing. So although it looks like it's completely random and crazy, and there is a bit of a random element to this, you do have control over the particles and that is based on the pressure that you place on the tablet, also the direction that you are pointing the stylus in. Okay, so we could get a really fun, and this was a crazy image to begin with, but you know, we're kind of doing a fun version of the bow for the holiday card. Now, if I switch to the other type of particle brush, which is the spring wormhole, I'm gonna go ahead and toggle the tracing paper and we'll come up here. You know, I could even, I could begin to fill her face in with this, but just to show you, um, I don't know if this, this probably isn't the best brush in the world for painting faces, as you can see, because it's a little bit too abstract. So if I use the particle spring, this one gives me, um, it's a much softer type of effect. And we never have to worry because we're working with a clone source. So if at any point in time I feel like, oh no, I've taken this too far, um, it looks a little bit too much, we can always clone back in part of the original image. So toggling back and forth, and that's probably what I'm gonna do here. Okay, so I'm gonna go, let me just zoom in so that you can see a little bit better this crazy thing that I am creating here. And this one was purely just for fun. Um, I just wanted to point out the particle brushes and show you guys, you know, you can really create some unique looking art with it. And I just want you to get in there and have some fun with them. Um, there's a lot of practical particle brushes also. Oh boy. This is what happens when you do live painting. Sometimes everything doesn't come out, you know, exactly perfect, but that's okay. All right, so let's get our neck in here. Let's check out what we've got. So if I want to begin, <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing at myself. So I think over the top of the bow, I may even add a little bit of the flow particle brush. Now I'm gonna add a layer, so I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna say insert a layer and we're gonna go and grab the soft cloner. So this is where, you know, if you take things too far, you can actually mix and match some of your natural media along with the original photo. So there are certain elements that you probably need to bring those details in to make sure that we're able to tell exactly what's going on in this image. So I still have the crazy particle brush strokes, but I can bring in just a tiny bit of that original photo so that we can see, you know, her facial features here. So if we come here and I'm gonna go back to my spring wormhole. Okay, so to bring in things like the hands, the face, the eyes, might wanna make sure that I'm using a brush that fills in, adds a little bit more paint than the, the fine bristly effect that um, the other particle brush was giving us. Okay, so fill a little bit of this in. So I think for time's sake, this is actually taking me, um, taking a bit more time than I was expecting to show you everything that I wanted to show. I think I have a version of Granny that, um, I have a little bit more complete than what I'm gonna be able to get done for you here right, right now. So let's go ahead and grab that. Let's open up Granny. It's a good thing I created this final paintings folder. That's all I have to say. Okay, so particle flow Granny. Actually, I think I'm gonna go, let's see. Yeah, we'll grab this one. I can show you some other fun things you could do. So once again, if you wanted to actually make this a holiday greeting, um, there are some tools that you can have some fun with. I'm gonna go over to the pattern pens and I'm gonna use a pattern pen mask. Now when you select the pattern pens, up on the property bar up on the top, you have all kinds to choose from, okay? So these are some of our preset settings and I'm gonna grab the music 
And we, we're going to insert a layer, and I'm actually going to maybe shrink this brush down just a little bit. But to have some fun, even the pattern pens are based on pressure. Okay, so I've got those upside down if I actually wanted to do, oh, let me make sure that I've got that brush selected. Come from over here. And then we could come and we could grab a particle brush, maybe the flow fur uh, to kind of match some of this flowy fur that we have over here. And I'm going to mix up a little red. You could also sample color from within your existing painting. And I need one that, let's see, let's go to, I'm just going to go to my old standby and make sure that we're not cloning the color from the image, but that we're painting Oh, that just looks beautiful. Okay, undo, 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 undo. Okay, so we'll get rid of the pattern pen, but I want to show you some other fun things that you can do. So we've got two different tools. One is mirror painting, and the other is kaleidoscope. So I've just turned on mirror, and I can take this, and I can adjust the location that the mirror painting is going to show up on the canvas. So I've just kind of adjusted it over the center of her body here. You can rotate it. You have both a vertical plane and a horizontal plane. So you can turn off one or the other or use them both at the same time. And now I'm gonna come up and we've got some new brushes for you to work with. Let's see here. I'm gonna use, let's see, maybe concept, let me just, so if we wanted to turn, do something fun with Granny, we could put her inside of a holiday wreath using the mirror tool because it's replicating everything on the opposite side of the canvas for me. We could paint a nice big bow down on the bottom here and then add some ornaments. Okay, so you can have some fun using the mirror tool. Um, let's see how far, I think I have 32 levels of undo in Painter, great, we got everything off there. Now I'm gonna switch to the kaleidoscope. And this is another one that you can have a lot of fun with. So using the kaleidoscope, I can position this anywhere on the canvas as I see fit. And once again, the property bar. So right now we have three segments. I'm going to increase this all the way to 12 segments. And using any brush that you want in the entire software. Um, and just to show you how this stuff shows, I keep going to the scratch board tool. I should probably use something a little bit different for you guys. So the kaleidoscope can be a lot of fun. It's once again replicating everything that you do, but now that's happening across all 12 segments that we're working with. I'm gonna maybe size down my brush here. So I just, I encourage you to play with these tools, have some fun, and we can come to our blenders, okay? So the blenders, although we haven't gotten to it yet, the blenders allow you to take content that's already on the canvas and blend it together. So check this out, okay? Depending upon the direction that I'm moving, we can begin to create some really interesting, um, you know, kind of kaleidoscopic, psychedelic effects using these tools. So have some fun with this. Now let's go ahead and close out of this. And I was going to have some fun with Ellen, but you know what? I think I'm running out of time here. So I'm just going to take a, uh, a look. Okay, it's the, um, there was something about the kaleidoscope. I'm already done with it. But uh, <laughs> all right, so I'm going to come back. I don't see any other questions. You guys are a very quiet bunch here today. So let's just finish things off. I'm gonna show you what the final painting of Ellen that I was gonna show you was gonna be. I'd like to have a little fun with this in social media, if we could. Okay, so you can do something like this. Take a selfie. I used a little bit of a particle brush that had a glow on it. Some of the new jitter brushes. There's a little glow on the glasses here too. 
a wreath around Bradley's neck. And so, you know, have fun, experiment with all the different brushes. And I really hope that uh, some of what I showed you here today is going to help with you, help give you some tips for maybe inspire you to just get crazy and create some fun things. Uh-oh. Okay. So John's asking, how about your photo? John, I think that I'm going to have to save my um, photo demonstration as a tutorial for you guys. All right. So that concludes our webinar here today. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, it has been recorded, so I'll post this online along with some of the stuff that I didn't get to will be posted as video tutorials for you. So please don't forget to join our Freeze the Moment contest. We're having so much fun seeing all those entries coming in, and there's really some fan fantastic prizes. So happy holidays. Enjoy um, the time that you may have off, and we will see you next month, I hope. Take care.